Well, good morning, everybody. I'm so excited that you have joined us here at Wahoo First UMC for worship this morning, March 29th. The format I thought worked out so well here last week, this kind of uh, pre-recorded format, that we decided that we wanted to go that direction again. Uh, But before we get into our message for today, uh, we do have a couple of announcements as a church that I want to share with you. So first, as you may know, that uh, Palm Sunday uh, will be upon us next Sunday, April 5th. We will not be able to gather for worship as a congregation, obviously, but that isn't going to stop us from remembering Jesus' triumphant procession into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Uh, So here's what we're going to do. The uh, palm branches for the church are going to be brought here on uh, Tuesday, uh, March 31st. Uh, So anytime after that, on Wednesday, April 1st or later, we're inviting you to come by the church and pick up a uh, palm branch for you and for your family members. So then what we're inviting you to do is to go home with your palm branches and take a picture or a short video of you and your family members waving your palm branches that you'll send back into the church office or to me directly. Uh, What we're going to do then is put together a video of everyone in our church Uh, all in their homes or wherever they are, waving their palm branches. We can put this video together and send it out to the entire church and community to show that we are still celebrating Palm Sunday together as a church, even if we're scattered. So swing by the church anytime on Wednesday or later, or if you want, we can bring them to you. If you just let us know in the church office, we will bring the palm branches to you. All right, so next, uh, looking forward to Easter. We've traditionally held an Easter egg hunt on Easter morning downstairs uh, during the Sunday school time for our children. Uh, But because we will not be having worship normally uh, there for Easter, uh, we have something uh, new and exciting planned for our kids and their families. And so we have these Easter packets, which have Easter fun for your family to do together that we want to give to you. So they'll be available to be picked up here at the church when you pick up your palm branches next Wednesday or later. So, Or if you want uh, to text me or Courtney Snyder and we will get you hooked up with one if you'd prefer to have it brought, uh, brought over to you. Finally, uh, looking forward uh, toward Holy Week, uh, we're still planning on having our annual Holy Week prayer vigil from uh, 9 p.m. on uh, Monday, Thursday until 9 a.m. on Good Friday. In this time, uh, people in the church are encouraged to... Uh, Uh, Sign up for a time slot when you come into the sanctuary and you pray for our church, for your family, for the entire world and our community. Uh, So this is a powerful time to remember these holy days, to walk through just as Jesus and the disciples prayed, just as they prayed on the night we are able to gather here and to pass on a vigil as we pray, as we as we pray together. So uh, if you'd like to sign up uh, for a time slot for the prayer vigil, Please call the church at uh, 443-4219 to find out uh, uh, find out what time slots are available, or you can follow the link that is emailed to you or might be below in the description for this video. I don't know how you're watching this. There might be a link below to go to an online sign-up for the prayer vigil. I'm not sure how that's working. So without any further ado, uh, let's get into the message for today from uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. All right, so today uh, we're going to jump back into our Lenten worship series called Vows, where we're examining what it means to be a Christian and a member of the United Methodist Church. Uh, So in the UMC, when you join, we vow to support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Uh, And so today we're going to talk about the vow of supporting the church with our service. A couple weeks ago, we talked about talk about how we support the church with our gifts or our treasure. Uh, Then so today we're going to talk about what it means to support the church with our time and our talents as well as the treasure. And so this vow reminds me of the first time I was called on to serve in my home church as a high school student growing up. Uh, So if we get into this and you realize you've already heard me uh, tell the story before, uh, feel free to skip ahead to about probably the eight minute mark of this video. Uh, We should be out of it by then, and so I'll let you go ahead and do that uh, if you want right now. Anyone still here? All right, great. I'm glad you're here with us still. Let's get into the story. So I was about a a sophomore in high school, like I said, when my home church launched a new uh, Sunday morning pray service uh, in our new, uh, in our brand new ministry center that we built as a church. 
And so everything in the building was new and shiny and perfect. Everything was great about worship except for one thing. And so that was in the back of the sanctuary as you walked out were these huge wooden doors that had a tendency to uh, slam shut uh, very loudly. And so a couple weeks into the praise service, our senior pastor was about to call the trustees to see if they could look into fixing the problem when our youth pastor spoke up with a different idea. And so he said, what if, instead of us actually fixing the problem, what if we had a couple of youth who would stand at the back of the sanctuary who would hold open the doors for people as they left and would make sure they closed quietly? So that was his idea, and so that's how... That's how my brother and I uh, were volunteered to serve in the church for the first time. Uh, so it was supposed to be a, a regular rotation of youth, uh, quickly devolved into me and my brother doing it every week. Uh, uh, and so that was the first taste of how things actually work in the church. And if you have volunteered to serve in any way in the church, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, but it was great. You know, this new ministry served... Uh, multiple purposes in the church. Uh, first and foremost, it kept everything it kept everything in worship running smoothly. People weren't uh, caught off guard by slamming doors. We made sure they closed quietly, and that was great. We also provided hospitality for them, as we hopefully had a smile on our face as we opened the doors and let them go out and in back into the worship space. And then finally, it also had the added benefit of it made people sit closer to the front of the worship space, no one wanted to sit toward the back, otherwise they would hear my terrible singing voice. Uh, and so it really was a win-win-win for the entire church. It helped all around. So when we talk about how we should serve the church, how we support the church with our service, this is what we mean here. It means helping out, offering yourself for the sake of others in a big way or even small ways. Even if it means simply holding the doors, you are serving other people and you are serving the church. So it brings to mind our scripture for today as well from First uh, Peter chapter 4. First uh, Peter chapter 4 says, Above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must speak as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must also do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. So to him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. What Peter is saying here in these verses is that we are called uh, to help and to serve however we can. Uh, so if you are a chef or a cook, you can bless people with food. If you have a gift that you could share, that is how you can serve people and bless your church and those around you. Uh, if you're a good listener, then you know that your calm presence and the shoulder you have to cry on are an enormous blessing for people in your life. So if you're like me and the only thing you're good at is holding a door in a sanctuary, you still have a part to play in the church as well. We know that you can do something, you can help out, you can serve, and that's what First Peter is telling us to do here. So coincidentally, our worship series after Easter in a couple weeks is going to focus more on First Peter as we walk through that entire letter. Uh, now, I had originally planned it as it lines up with the lectionary series for Eastertide here this year, but the messages in First Peter of hope and of uh, perseverance in the midst of hardship I know will be a gift from God to our church family in this time, and so I encourage you uh, to prepare for that worship series in a couple weeks. Uh, now, what uh, jumps out to me in these verses is one of the words that Peter uses in verse 10. Uh, uh, in that verse, he describes the grace of God as manifold, uh, which isn't a word that we really use a whole lot outside of maybe plumbing or piping in our world today, but I think it really drills down and shows the beauty of God's grace. Uh, you see, the Greek uh, for the word manifold is poikilos, which means many-colored. 
Uh, it means having a multitude of different colors. Uh, so I think that this is a beautiful description of God's grace. Uh, that God's grace is manifold. It is brightly colored, many colored. It's like a rainbow. It's a brightly colored sign of hope in our troubled times. Or we can think of God's grace like a prism, which bends and refracts and diffuses white light into the entire spectrum of all the colors that we see in the rainbow or anywhere else are all held in white light and that is refracted in a prism. So I think that that's a good way to look at what our service does for our faith and for us and for the world around us. So we know that God's grace is like a light shining down from heaven all around us wherever we are. Uh, And so when we serve, when we give of ourselves to help someone or to support our church, what we're doing is we are being one color in the brilliant spectrum of light that is God's grace. We see that our service might not be the brightest color. We see that our service might not even be our favorite color, but it is an essential, critical contribution to the manifold color of God's grace. And so that's what we're called to be. Uh, We're called to take our place in the manifold grace of God, that we will be a blue, a red, a yellow, an orange, whatever color you are, and we join with all the other colors of our church, and we show that God's grace is complete. In that. And I think this understanding helps us in our current situation too. So, like we talked about last week, we're used to being one bright light in the sanctuary on Sunday mornings together. Uh, But so now we've been scattered, we've been uh, refracted uh, in a sense. And so the manifold colors of the rainbow that have been refracted, so we have too. And so we have to be our own manifold color wherever we are, however we can. We're still a light along with everyone else in our church family and around the world. So I encourage you somehow to find some small way or a big way this week to help out and to serve someone around you. Someone in need uh, or someone who'd be blessed by your service. Uh, we have uh, volunteers in this church who are picking up groceries or running errands for people who need it, and you can join them. Uh, Or you can write a letter to a neighbor or a friend. Uh, If they're cooped up in their house, maybe reading a letter from you would brighten their day. Or you could send a message to a healthcare worker that you know, or to someone else who just needs a pick-me-up right now, someone whose job has been deemed essential, and they just need someone to smile at them, to say something kind to them in this time. So whatever you do, however you serve, what I want you to do, I want you to know that you are doing so with the strength of God, as Peter says. That whatever you do out in the world, you do so as God's agent of the manifold, many-colored grace of God. So as Peter says, know that it is all for the glory of God revealed through Jesus Christ. And so to him and to him alone belong the glory and the power forever and ever. It's Amen.